after finding love online, our next guest ended up helping run the village school in the Alaskan bush, where temperatures can plummet to minus 80 below freezing. It's pretty cold. And ex access to the outside world depends on the weather as well. This incredible life is documented in her latest memoir. Please welcome to the cafe author Emma Stevens. Yes. Welcome, Emma. Thank you. First up, I must ask you, we talk about the Alaskan bush all the time, but is it, I, I didn't think there was bush in Alaska. No, it's really tundra. And a lot of people go out there expecting to see bush and actually no there's no bush there's lots of tundra snow and ice and mountains and tundra is like the sort of the sort of scrappy yes yeah, marum grassy sort of look yeah as i envision it in my head good to know good to know <laughs> how did you end up there I, on, I met my husband online when i was living in belclutha and he was in the north pole so we couldn't be further apart we never expected to meet and i wrote all about that in the first memoir called walking on ice and there's been such a demand for the story. I wrote the second one, which was about teaching in the bush and nesting on the Nushagak. And this last book, Dancing on the Tundra, is about what happened next. And I became a cultural coordinator for the nine village schools and had to use a small plane to fly into the most remote villages. Wow. And was nearly killed in one of the planes that I was in, so we moved to the last village. So you went, no, this isn't so good. We're not gonna be taking that plane anymore. Um, mm. What an extraordinary life. Yes. And when you arrived at, uh, at one of the villages, the, the elder, the Eskimo elder actually greeted you with, we've been waiting for you. And he was holding a Maori toko toko, <gasps> a Maori carved walking stick. And I'm looking at him. We're in the most remote village in Alaska. And I speak a bit of Maori. And I had introduced myself to the whole faculty in Māori and he'd come to me and stood in my doorway and said, we've been waiting for you. And it was like, oh my goodness, we want what you've got. And I'm thinking, what on earth have I got? <laughs> <laughs> he said, we want our own meeting house and we want our language to be brought back into the school. How, and so that's what we did. How did he come to have the, uh, the traditional Māori walking Well, stuff? that was my first question yeah. after all of this. And he apparently had come out here in the 80s when the Kohanga Reo had begun. Oh, wow. And gone to the North Island, around here somewhere. And he showed me, he found old, old videos. And he couldn't remember the names of anywhere. And I couldn't, I was trying to look at mountains. I know he went and visited the Māori Queen. How And they wrote a haka for him, which was all wrong. <laughs> Ko matuna chupi, they said, Ko matuna Inuit. And he's not Inuit, they're Tupic Eskimo. Right. So we changed that. Now, when you talk about being remote, how remote are we talking? I mean, what was life like in this, these places for you? Well, you know, there's a road system in Alaska and anything off the road system is bush. We lived probably a day's flight, uh, probably five, six hours in a small plane out from there. So they drop off your um, groceries and everything for the year. And then the planes go, that's it. There's no other way out. So, so what happens if someone gets seriously ill? Well, there's no medical support. You see some pretty horrific accidents out there and you sort of make do. But they do have local like nursing aides that might have had the first aid course and you're sort of warned not to spend much time there because there's lots of problems with that. So you do try and get a plane out. They get sent in Black Hawk helicopters if it's a real emergency. Gosh. But this trilogy looks incredible. What did you learn after you'd finished that experience? What do you think you took away from it? that I wanted to live there forever. Right. I didn't want to come back. <laughs> you didn't. <laughs> no. And I never wanted to go out there in the first place. Like, who wants to live in a bleak iceberg mm. at the top of the world and the freezing cold? And it wasn't until I flew out there by a small plane during fall, um, and I flew out nine days after 9-11 and was apprehended at LA airport as an Irish terrorist, but apart from that, <laughs> oh. I loved it. And it was like, oh my goodness, I could live here. And my husband got really worried. We are gonna go home, we're gonna go back to New Zealand. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but he had to really force me to come back. I would have still be there. Wow, what an extraordinary tale. Isn't we can that, read all about yeah. it too on Dancing on the Tundra, which is out right now. Incredible story. Thank you so much, Emma. Thank you. Uh, it's available in all good book outlets right now.